Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your wisdom. I can't wait to speak to you. I love you, Paige. What draw, drawn drew me to you, great start, what drew me to you was how you introduce yourself in your videos. So you said, I'm a child therapist and I help families connect and communicate. And that's all we need, is that communication, that connection from our parents. It sounds so simple, but the way you put it in all your videos, I love. And I just had to get you on to share your wisdom. So without wasting anyone's time, without wasting your time, let's get straight into it. Can we speak about the whispering method? So for me, um, as a child, I had a very active imagination. I was always writing stories about how me and my friends had superpowers. I could sit in a room and play with my toys for hours and hours and hours. So now that I have kids, I find it easy, I will say, to sit on the floor and play with them. And sometimes I get carried away and play too much on my own. <laughs> um, but not a lot of parents are like that. Can we talk about first the whispering method that you talk about, please? Yeah, sure, sure. So usually what you're supposed to do is follow the child's lead when playing. But like what you said, like often parents kind of struggle with like this uncertainty of like, you know, where is this going? What am I supposed to be doing? But like when you ask those questions, like you're putting this pressure on this kid to like, help me, help me, help me. And they're so like, they're not focused on their play and playing is where they are able to help make sense of the world, communicate with you and, and process everything going on. So like when you're asking these questions, like, oh, what am I supposed to be doing? What is that? What is this? It's they're not be able to, to focus, focus on it. So like when you whisper, it's kind of like, I think of it like, like an actor, like what's my line? What am I supposed to do? So kind of, it doesn't pull them out as much as, of their play. So it's just like, Hey Ben, what am I supposed to say next? And it's like, Oh, okay. It's like, then, then you just yeah. kind of get on with it. So it, it's, it's, it's kind of like a role play. And that's sometimes yeah. how I try to frame it too, of like, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're, you're playing a role, you're, you're mirroring kind of what they're doing and you're really supposed to help them provide an environment where they're free to feel what they feel and think what they think and, and play what they want to play. Yeah. Great. Perfect advice. Thank you. I, I, I think I've done the same like unintentionally. So I haven't whispered, but I've asked like quiet a question. So when I've been playing and I'll be like, which one do you want me to be? I'll be this one. Oh, do you mean to get in the car too? Okay. So it shows that, like you said, they are in, and I, I think, I can't remember how you worded it exactly in one of your videos, but you were going into their world with them. You So you're showing them you're not separate from that, which is fantastic advice. What about parents who, and a lot of people that follow me, unfortunately, had bad upbringing and didn't have the parents like like they should have had, like they deserved. Didn't have that unconditional love and freedom that they should have had. So what about the parents who can't get down and play with their kids? Me personally, the advice I give is if you feel awkward, play pretend with your kids. If you feel awkward trying to use your imagination, your child doesn't know. If you get on the floor and you think, oh, what do I do next? What do I do? Are they enjoying this? They have no idea that you panic in there. What advice for you, would you give to parents who feel uncomfortable or even just don't know where to start when it comes to playing with the kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in one of my videos, I, I talked about like the pride skills, P-R-I-D-E. So praise, like you can even just, you don't even necessarily have to play with them. Like you can just sit there and just, just observe them. You can praise them. You can reflect what they're feeling, what they want, what they wish through their play. You can imitate. So you can do kind of something similar to what they're doing as a way to kind of implicitly like approve that what they're doing is fine and okay and keep going. Uh, D is describe. So just describe what they're doing, like, like narrating kind of their play, like, like a author would or like national geographic. Uh, and then E is enjoy. I mean, just simply just enjoy being around your children because they're amazing human beings. Um, but it, if you can't, then, then sometimes it's important to kind of meet parents where they're at because, you know, it's important that they enjoy it and that they are able to do this. So it can be either like role playing, you can play board games, you can play card games, something with more structure with less imagination. Um, but like if they're working with me, like we will work together with the kid, like the three of us and, and play together and they can observe me and kind of what I'm doing and how I'm working with them. Um, doing it online is a little bit trickier. So like, so Ben, I said, I was going to put you on the spot. Like, cause like some of the, some of the principles and I've seen, I've been seeing this more in the comments. And so it kind of, kind of confirms my theory of like, it's kind of like improv comedy where it's like, don't say no, don't block their play, 
don't try and change directions like just say yes and and keep going with it like go with the flow so you know people with a lot of traumatic upbringings you know all that uncertainty all of that all those surprises those those often come with a lot of bad stuff so you know just not knowing what to do can be like triggering so but if you're able to work through that and get comfortable with this this uncertainty then you're able to enjoy your time more with your children so i said i had an activity uh and this this comes from improv too where you know we can come up with a story or we can come up with a sentence and you say one word i say another word and we keep going back and forth until we create you know a sentence a paragraph okay so cool. so i'll i'll go first the little yellow frog man loved his little boy and kissed a green pretty princess well, oh, we can just stop there. But that, see, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's um, like we we just we just flow together. Yeah, I I do something similar with my daughter. Um, some nights, so I'll I'll say, "Do you want me to tell you a story?" And she'll say yes. And if we if we're in bed and the lights are out, um, because we our daughter sleeps in between us in bed, and I start telling her a story about a princess called Piper or a stinky bum called Piper, which is my daughter's name. Um, <laughs> and I'll say, right, we. Piper goes to the park, and then I'll say she goes on the swings, and then she'll go, Mickey. And I'll say, yeah, Mickey Mouse is there. And Mickey Mouse goes on the swing. And then she'll go, friends? I'm like, yeah, all your friends are there too. So we sort of do the same thing un unintentionally. What I think also has helped my daughter's um, imagination, I'm saying my daughter said my son, because my son's only just doing one. What has helped my daughter's imagination a lot is I will, when she's playing with her, with her toys, I will hold her toys, and I will either sing songs from a disney film she likes watching or i will reenact certain things from the movie so she links them so even if it's just having two random toys and she was in a massive baby shark phase which is not completely out of and i'd have two toys and i'd go run away do 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 and then she would do it with herself so we'd encourage her and now she'll now she talks for hours on her own she can be we can go on a car journey and she'll just have a full-on conversation with herself in the back playing um Okay, so a lot of my followers, unfortunately, the page is called Trauma Corner. Um, again, they, yeah. did, they didn't have the parents that they deserved. Um, and to start, when they become parents, maybe they weren't the parents that they, that they could have been. Uh, but now they're working on changing that, working on becoming better parents themselves. So you talk a lot about how to detect emotional abuse in children and what that looks like, even if it's from the past way you used to parent and now you're trying to change that or from other members of the family or if you're separate from your from the baby's parent and then um from anyone really how do you pick up on that and then how do we how do we detect it and heal if you don't mind uh, detect it in kids or in kids yeah sorry kids so oftentimes like if i'm working with them it shows up in their play because you know they'll treat something uh less powerful or something that kind of symbolizes them and they will cut they will take the role of the abuser and it's like you know you stupid and it's like oh okay it's like a... um but oftentimes it can show up a lot more subtly with just being low confidence not being able to identify feelings it's either like good or bad uh they can either be explosive or implosive so like they can just lash out at others or they can lash out at themselves. Um, let's see. I mean, even just like abuse, I mean, just physical development can be impacted too. They can grow physically and emotionally uh, less than their peers. They really start to stick out as not being have not having friends uh, or they could also just be like I refer to it as like a social chameleon, just like blending in and not yeah. having any sort of identity and just agreeing and like not knowing how to play and like trying to ask me like, oh, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, this is your time. You can choose what to play. Yeah. And it's like they don't have like favorites. It's like, well, what do you like? Like I work with kids like in, in foster care and like 
oftentimes, you know, they'll say like, oh, this is like my favorite food. It's like, and they've hated it every day that they've been there, but they said they like it. So they, you know, don't get rejected. So, yeah. So. And I think a lot of us are like that. A lot of us, we are conditioned from a young age to be people pleasers. And if we're not doing something to benefit our parents, then we are made to feel like bad children. So a lot of us yeah. end up as those, I think it's social chameleon, you called it. We blend into people please everyone and it takes away our identity. Otherwise, we have so many, so many grown adults walking around who have no idea who they are. Exactly. Exactly. Um, oh, can I say more to that? Oh, yeah, of course. So like, yeah. So if I'm working with like grownups, like oftentimes, like, you know, they'll try to play this role of being like, you know, the perfect client. Like they don't want to be a bother or a burden or be too challenging. I'm like, I don't want you to play any role. I want you to be you. Like, I want you to have experience where you can be who you are and say what you are and think what you think and feel what you feel and have that be accepted. Yeah. Okay. Like just be you. Yeah, exactly. And if there are, if we notice this sort of behavior in our kids, how do we, where do we go from there? How do we create a safe place for those and how do we help them heal? The word I keep coming back to is like acceptance, accept who you are, accept, you know, the, the, the things that you love about them and the things that frustrate you. I mean, it's all wrapped up into it. We're all imperfect. We all make mistakes. We all do things that frustrate and, and madden other people. And that's okay. Like, yeah, that's, that's, that, that comes with it too. Because if you're not having this conflict, then you're also not like sharing who you really are too. Yeah. Um, I think I spoke about this recently. Um, how, especially when we have, we try not to be like our parents. So we, if we had bad parents, that is. So we cling on to the bad bits of parenting that we do and think we're really bad parents. We forget about all the good stuff. Having kids is really fucking hard. It's really challenging. My daughter is two and a half now. And she's wild. She will not listen to a word you say. If she's running off somewhere and you tell, you can shout at her, grab her arm, l- ignore it, whatever you do. And if you shout at her, she will just do the same thing, but just goofy. She will not listen to a word you say. Um, or she will just do this face and still do it. Um, parenting can be very frustrating. Uh, one of your videos caught my attention. Um, and like I said, I didn't watch the full video because I wanted to save it for you. How, you talk about how you get your child to listen, which works. I think you said 90% of the time by using a rep- rep- repetition technique. Can you talk about that, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, really try it. And like, if there's, a, if there's an important like instruction or command, and I think in the uh, video that you mentioned, like it was about like climbing up, up the slide because, you know, what my youngest one has, he, he loves to do that. And, 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 and people in the comments are like, what's wrong with climbing up the slides? Like, there's nothing wrong with it. But if there's other kids there, like if it's busy, then like creates a safety issue. And like that needs to be addressed. So uh, making sure to, you know, if they have a hard time following instructions, if they have ADHD, like making sure, like ask them to repeat back what you heard, because they will like, you know, you'll tell them, hey, don't go up the slide. And like, they'll just look at you dead in the face and just be like, just walk, walk off. And it's like, but if you ask like, well, repeat back what I said, like, I want to make sure you understand. It's like, I don't know. And it's like, <laughs> so it's like, you think they're listening, but sometimes they're not. So it's important to like check in and make sure. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, but also making sure, like, if you give an instruction, like, you know, ask, kind of ask the questions, like what's in it for them? Like, why, why should they listen? Like what's important about it? Is there a rule? Is a safety concern? Is there a reward? And then also like the consequences if they don't, follow this rule so like with the slide like you know the slides for going down you know if you choose to go up like you're gonna have to sit out for a little bit like but if you don't like you can keep playing or you know we can go get ice cream like what have you Um, yeah i think a lot of it is is logic too because like my daughter is smart so if i say don't go up the slide and there's no other kids there she in her brain she's figuring out she's like no i i can't go up this slide why are you telling me not to and i think a lot of the time I know I had it from my parents, and a lot of people did. It was, uh, no, you can't do this. Why not? Because I said so, with no logic there. So I think uh, getting your child to repeat what you've said will make it stick. And it's also given reason in two. So don't do this because of this. There's been times where this is sort of slightly related. There's been times where my daughter have said, can we go to the park? And I've said, no, not today, babe, the park's closed. 
even though it's not. And then I've had to stop myself and say, yeah, we can. Or even if you just say, daddy's tired today, or not right now, or even if the weather doesn't look that good, or anything that is, as long as you give them an answer, that's great parenting, I think. Um, speaking of parenting advice there, a lot of people are, a lot of people that follow me are scared to either, either scared to be to have kids, because they don't want to affect their kids in the way their parents affected them, but or, or they are just about to have kids too, and they are terrified because of the parenting they had. What advice could you give to first-time parents, whether it's one main thing that you think of the top of your head, or just in general advice there? So I think, I think probably the two biggest things that like how trauma like affects just people in general and and especially like with parents is like toxic shame of this feeling like, you know, I'm damaged, I'm unlovable, I'm, you know, with shame with parents, like, I'm a bad parent. And then um, the second one is a harsh inner critic. So really just beating yourself up over the smallest mistakes. And like, so, so with that, like, it's important to have community. And it's important to like, you know, one of the things I've loved about being a child therapist is like seeing like how common a lot of these, um, a lot of these situations are where people just make mistakes. And it's like, oh, you know, I'm the worst parent ever. Like they just shower themselves in this criticism. It's like, but if you saw like everyone else does it, like you'd be kinder and gentler with yourself and be able to, to laugh at it too. Um, yeah. And not to say like, not, it's like, it's not serious and not to learn from it, but it's also like some of the things kids and parents do is just literally like absurd. <laughs> so. Like, yeah. so so being able to come at it with like a sense of humor too and just forgive yourself and forgive your children and forgive other people because I mean parenting like you said it's really 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 hard and especially if you have no model for that it makes it even 10 times harder yeah and a lot of the time we are hard on ourselves for the small yeah. things because family was hard on us for the small things too and it just becomes natural yeah. to have this self-doubt about ourselves um exactly but yeah, parenting is hard. So thank you for your wisdom there. Um, and I, I know we've had, maybe we speak of maybe 20 minutes, but it's been concise and informative and I really hope people take from it. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. If you could, I'd like to ask all my clients, oh, sorry, I'd like to ask all my guests this. Um, and if you've, if you've ever watched any of my podcasts, stay to the end, sometimes it hits home. So I'd like to ask you, if you went forward into the future to where you were 80 years old and you looked back on your life at this moment, what would you be proud of? That's a, that's a good question. You know, like with the aged filters that they have like on TikTok, like I, I, I was, I was going to do that, but then I, I looked exactly like Louis Thoreau and I was like, I just <laughs> could stop laughing. So, <laughs> but uh, but if my 80 year old self were to look back on this moment, um, I think he'd say he's pretty proud of me for putting myself out there. Um, I, I come from a traumatic background too. And so uh, it's been really hard to put myself out there because I didn't, I, I came into the, came into this, like not thinking anyone was going to notice me. This was just like for my clients, but it's like, there's something about you that people like. So like, you need to like yourself too. And I think, yeah. and, and you're starting to notice that. So keep noticing. That's, that's a big thing. Yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here for everyone. Yeah, thank you for um, having me. No problem. Where can people find you online? Uh, find me on my TikTok page, uh, Joshua Terhune. Um, I also have a website, www.joshuaterhunecounseling.com. Um, that's, that's where I'm at for now. Looking to expand, but not right now. So. Okay, thank you so much for your time. And I'll speak to you soon.